Hey, this is JP with JP's Guide Service. I'm going to show you guys today how to make a wacky rigged pink worm. Wacky's rigged a couple ways. Uh, this particular way is nose down to a hook, tail up. I've had a lot of people ask recently how to rig a pink worm backwards. Today this rig is rigged with a piece of stick lead and I use stick lead everywhere on the coast instead of slinkies now. Everybody's got their own best piece of lead to use and personally I, I don't know what it is about the stick lead but I like using it. It seems to be pretty flawless. So I'm going to show you how to make the stick lead on a wacky rig pink worm. Tail down, nose forward. The theory behind the tail down, nose forward is pretty simple. I mean everybody's got their own opinion with the pink worm. I believe that with a nose down worm when it's pointed right at the fish they don't have any second guessing where to hit. If you fish it this way, they might hit the tail and miss the hook. Hook would be over here, tail would be right here. But if you fish the worm downwards, it's coming into their face. If they're sitting upstream and they're seeing it come, it's pretty hard to miss the hook when it's face down into their nose. Personally, I've got a better hookup ratio fishing it this way. So what you're going to need is a Procure Professional Bait Threader. This is that sport color, about three bucks. They come in a pack of two. They look like this, they're pretty long. You can thread a seven or eight inch worm if you can find one with this big stick. First you're gonna start with your uh, hook, obviously. I chose to use this two watt owner mosquito hook that I cut off an old leader to show you with. The reason why I like using the mosquito hook by owner is they designed this hook very flat and straight. There's no bend like an octopus hook at the top of the shank. So when you thread it all through with the finished product, it looks like this. It's all straight and flat. The hook doesn't sit, sit off to the side like a regular octopus hook would make it sit on an offset. With this, it's pretty straight. It floats down the river right into the mouth. They can't miss it. It's not sitting off to the side. So with the mosquito hook, once again, the lineup is pretty flat. There's no bend on the top of the shank. So let's start with a uh, leader. I use 12 pound uh, P-Line CXX Premium. It's pretty strong, big fish. Don't want to get owned in a log jam. So I use this leader. Probably go to 15 pound. If you're really chasing a big boy. Gonna use a regular gnaw here. Put her through, wrap her. The top. Back through, over the top here. Coming tight, pulling tight. The worm today I'm going to use is JP Red Dream from Western Fishing Operations. This is a 5.5 version with the glow tail. I like this worm a lot. It's uh, a great worm for when your river is in good condition from 3 to 5 feet of vis. It's got a little purple haze in it, the tail glows. It's a beautiful worm, changes colors in the light, translucent. It's, it's dialed. Let's start with your, your threader after you tie your leader. I usually run, let's see here, I'm um, six foot. This is about as long as my worm leaders are from the edge of my shoulder to the tip of my fingers right there. I'd say a little over 25 inches or so and you can cut it down. Worm leaders, you don't need them very long. Two odd owner mosquito sliding down a cheater of choice. This worm is kind of pink so Take it over here and I found Bomac has color number 75. Bomac number 12, color 75. It's like this purpley pink, uh, candy pink look and it matches this red dream perfectly. They, they just kind of flow together with the two colors. I don't know if you can see that in this light. But uh, let's slide the cheater down after you tie the hook. So then you got this cheater and a hook. Take your Pro Cure bait threader. Enter from the top of the worm. This little thing right here is where you're going to put your line at. But I'm going to enter from the very top of the worm just like this, right in the center. Now the key here is to slide it down in the middle of the worm just by working it down real slow. Work it down real slow like that. And sometimes you see I just popped out. It's kind of hard to do it in the camera face there. Keep going, keep going. Now where you exit is how much tail is going to be in front of you. Um, I don't like a lot of tail like if you came out here. This is how much is gonna be flopping around I don't want to confuse the fish and where to attack it from 
I just want them to know exactly hit the head where the hook is. So I don't leave a lot of tail flapping around. I mean, I usually come out on the 5.5 worm into the white right there. So there's just a little bit of tail that's going to flop around in the current. Now, some days, if you want a lot of action, you can actually have them come out, have the line come out about here, have a lot more wiggle motion. But for good conditions, easy fishing, have it about there so you don't miss your hookups. Slide it down real slow, don't go fast, you'll burn the worm, create a big hole inside of it. When you get to about here, stop. That's where you're going to put your line at, right through the tip of that. Take my leader line, slide it right through the very top of that. Don't leave a lot of leader line out the end because you're going to crease it right here when you pull it through the worm like this. You're going to cut that tail off so you don't tie it onto your main line and break a big fish off. And get it through. I'm going to have this little extra piece right there. I usually use my mouth. Slide it down really slow, not going fast. You don't want to burn it. Come down to about here. Stop. Cinch it up a couple times. There you go. This is a rigged, wacky pink worm. There's the finished product. Got pretty bad light here, but I like it once again because she sits flat like this in the current, right in their mouth. They can't miss it. Not a lot of tail right there, so you can't miss the hook. That's the theory. So that's the Wacky Rig JP Red Dream 5.5 Worm, color number 75 from Bomac. Purple Haze Cheater with a Purple Haze Worm. Number 2 Watt Owner Mosquito, 12 pound CXX Premium. Pretty good line for worm fishing. Uh, stick Lead. Dwayne England taught me about the Stick Lead. I gotta give him some credit here. Stick Lead is a, a really good easy to make snagless lead on the coast it fishes so flawlessly it just ticks along you will not snag up as much with stick lead as slinkies and that's again in my opinion everybody's got their own um, I enjoy using this stuff it's a flawless presentation uh, what I have here to make the stick lead is Brad spinner shanks to start with that's the shank right here that the lead sits in the middle of um, these are in uh, 0.31 millimeter shafts they 0.031 excuse me they're pretty thin there's about as thin as you want to go it still gives it the appliable bendable feel but not too much bend it's still pretty stiff so it'll tick across the bottom so I'm going to take a Brad's 0.031 spinner shank take it out take my eighth out, uh, eighth inch hollow core lead right here this is eighth inch hollow core um, and use my select sizes right now for high water since you're going to be fishing the soft edges so use a small piece about like this about two and a half three inches max take the spinner shank line up where you how much lead you want on here just mark it let's just call it right there about four inches or so cut it just like that take your spinner shaft and simply just insert it into the end right here let's see if I can get it in the camera there there we go coming through just push it out the other end so here's your shaft and don't try and reuse this piece just cut it off it's the easiest easiest way to go take some pliers here I usually leave a little lead you gotta have a lead to secure it in so leave that much on the top cut it bring it around and all I'm gonna do is just secure it into itself so it can't go anywhere Let's see if I can get this done. Wrong pair of pliers. I usually use a bigger pair of pliers, but just squeeze it in. There, you got stick lead. It'll go right on your shank, your hook. If you find yourself on the river saying, "Oh, I cut this. This is too big. My drip, my drift's too slow. The rower's rowing too hard to try and keep up with you. Your float's way behind you. Your side drift, and it's not keeping up with the boat speed." All you gotta do is just cut it on the river. Cut where you think you want. Cut it off. Slide the shank up a little bit trim a section again off so you have a hollow end push it back through you just shorten yourself up and adjust it to the current speed on the river real time gotta love that Let's see if I can get this to sit down right there we go really important to secure the end so you don't have your line snagging into it popping off on the bottom you can do a lot of things with it I just like to really crease my lead so it's pressed in pretty tight. 
you won't snag against your lead. There's a shorter piece of lead, you'll, you'll drift a lot easier with that. Thanks for watching the video. This is, once again, a wacky rig, nose down, personal way I fish a worm, and stick lead to go with it. Hope it helps rig you guys up, and uh, let me know if you have any questions, feel free to visit my website. And if you need any worms, Rusty Bell's got a lot of good colors, so check out WFOWorms.com. And let me know if you need anything. Take care, guys.